All right, in our next video on waves, mechanical waves, we're going to look at what we call wave interference or the interference of waves. Now, that sometimes has a wrong connotation. People think interference, that means they destroy each other or whatever. Yeah, well, in some cases, that is indeed the case. When wave interfere, that means that two waves are superimposed on each other. Sometimes they do cancel each other out and the wave completely disappears. Sometimes they add to one another and you end up with a bigger wave than you started with. Now here I have two waves, y1, y2, again y1 and y2 are the displacement from the equilibrium point, the equilibrium point would be the horizontal axis, so it's the displacement of the, from the equilibrium point as a function of position and time, assuming of course that both waves are moving to the right at the same velocity, how do I know that? Because they have the same k and they have the same omega which gives them the same velocity, in this case they even have the same amplitude. If you make them different amplitudes, things get a little bit more complicated. Actually, a lot more complicated. So they'll have the same amplitude, but they are different in that one wave is ahead of the other wave by a phase difference of phi. And so you can see that the angles are not the same. The second wave is ahead of the first wave by a certain displacement. Now, if you were to graphically combine those two, you can do that. You can say, all right, if I add those two together right here, that looks like it's about this high. When I add, um, let's see here, when I add these two together right here, that looks like about the zero point. Here, that looks about here. Here, that looks like about the zero point. Here, it looks a lot higher. Then, let's see here. Here would be about the zero point. A lot higher. That would be about the zero point and a lot higher. So if we connect those dots together, the combined wave would kind of look like this. And there might still be a little wiggle on there, but uh, there'll be a pretty good approximation of what the combined wave looks like, roughly speaking. All right. Now notice what will happen when these waves start pulling farther and farther apart. Let's say if the wave difference or the phase difference between the two waves is larger, then the wave would look quite a bit different. But we're not going to get into that right now at this moment. What we'd like to do is come up with an equation that combines these two so that we have something that describes a wave that looks like this, like the red wave. Okay, the way to do that is to use the trigonometric identity right here. The sine of an angle plus the sine of a different angle can be written like this. So we're going to use this identity for these two waves right here. Now, that means that if I'm adding y1 plus y2, y1 plus y2, that is the same as saying I'm taking a times the sine of kx minus omega t, and I'm adding to that the second wave, which is a times the sine of kx minus omega t minus phi. Now the next thing I'm going to do, just to make it simpler, I'm going to factor out an a. So this is equal to a times the sine of kx minus omega t plus the sine of kx minus omega t minus phi. All right, now I realize that this angle here can be represented by the letter A right there, and this here can be represented by the letter B right there. And so now when we go ahead and combine those two using the identity, so this is equal to A times the sine plus the sine gives us two times the sine of half the sum of the two. That would be two times the sine of one half times the sum of the two angles, A and B, that would be kx minus omega t plus kx minus omega t minus phi. So I've added a and b together. Then times the cosine of one half the difference of the two angles. So I take a, which is kx minus omega t, and I subtract from that this angle. So I'll do that now. So minus a kx minus a minus omega t, that gives me plus omega t, and minus a minus phi, which plus phi. All right. Now notice I can multiply this back in, so I'll have two times the amplitude, the original amplitude, so the wave will be large in amplitude, so this is equal to two times a. Let's see here, we have one half times kx plus kx, so that would be two kx, but times a half, that gives me a single kx, so it would be two a times a sine of a single kx, 
a minus omega t and a minus omega t combined is minus 2 omega t but times a half that would be minus omega t and I have minus phi times a half would be minus phi over 2. Uh, probably don't need square brackets just uh, I don't think we need to do it like this so just use round brackets or round parentheses times the cosine of 1 half times this. Now notice kx minus kx cancels out minus omega t plus omega t cancels out we have a plus phi times a half so cosine of a half of phi right there and then it's traditional that we tend to write the cosine in front of the sine so this can be written as two times the original amplitude times the cosine of phi over two half of phi times the sine of kx minus omega t minus phi over two all right now let's try interpret what that means. So this is the sum of the two waves. First of all, it looks like the amplitude is bigger, which we can see with the red line, it's bigger. Also notice that the peak occurs a little bit further to the right. Notice the peak occurs, let me use a different color for that. The peak occurs right halfway between the peaks of the other two waves. Since the other two waves are separated by a whole phase phi, then the peak of the sum is to the right a half a phi, which is what this is right here. So minus a half a phi. So the phase difference of this wave with wave number one here is a half a, a half a phi, and that's apparent in our drawing right there. So that makes sense. Notice that the kx minus omega t is still the same characteristic, characteristic of that. So it has the same wavelength, the same frequency as the original two waves. So that seems apparent there as well. Uh, one more thing is this factor right here, the cosine of phi over 2. Now, notice that if the phase difference is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, and the amplitude would be exactly twice the original amplitude, which would be interesting because then what you have is two waves that are on top of each other, and so the actual result will be that the amplitude is twice the size of a single wave. Makes sense. Now, as the waves separate more and more, the cosine of a bigger and bigger angle becomes smaller, 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 and eventually what happens when, when we have the cosine of, let's say, 180 degrees divided by 2? What if the two waves are separated by 180 degrees? What do you get then? Hmm, let's draw that out and get a feel for it. So let's say we have wave number 1 that looks like this. And then wave number 2, which would be 180 degrees shifted to the right. 180 degrees means that you get to this point right here and so then you would be going down and up and down and up that's where the second wave is 180 degrees out of phase with the first one if you add those two together what do you get no wave at all you completely cancel each other out that's why they call this wave interference and notice that would happen when you have phi equals to 180 degrees which is a complete radian or a complete pi radian I should say. Now notice if you plug in 180 degrees over there what is the cosine of 180 degrees divided by 2? Well that's equal to the cosine of 90 degrees and of course we all know that the cosine of 90 degrees which is pi over 2 is equal to 0 and therefore this would be the multiplication factor of the amplitude. The amplitude goes to 0, waves completely disappear. So that's how you look at wave interference and Hopefully, this will give you a good insight of what that means. Remember, the case that we had here is that we have two waves, same amplitude, same wavelength, same frequency, same velocity, therefore, shifted by uh, a certain distance, a certain portion of a wave or a certain phase, and also notice that they have the same velocity and they're traveling in the same direction to the right. Both of them traveling to the right because when we do the case where they're traveling in opposite directions, you'll get a very different result, and we'll see that in one of the next videos.